Hi everybody and welcome to this lesson on the elastic block storage. So in this lesson we're going to see how we can create a EBS volume using our AWS management console. So in order to create the EBS volume first we need to navigate to our EC2 dashboard because EBS volumes are connected to our EC2 instances. And once we're there we're going to go ahead and select elastic block volume. And we want to go ahead and create our first volume. Here's where we can select the different configurations of the volume that we want to create, the volume type. And if you guys remember, there are the main volume types that are offered by EBS, whether it's a GP SSD, whether we want a provisioned high throughput SSD drive, whether we want a cold HDD, a throughput optimized regular hard drive, or a standard magnetic one. So depending on what type of use your EC2 instance or this EBS volume will be used for will determine what type of configuration you will use here. And again, and the GIB, the size of the volume, we can specify that here. Now this one, the availability zone becomes fairly important. We need to because EBS volumes can only be attached to EC2 instances within the same availability zone. So let's say if we were to create this EBS volume in US East 1A, but our instances are in US East 1C, this EBS volume will not be able to be attached to those EC2 instances. So it's important we keep track of which availability zones we are creating our EC2 instances and our EBS volumes in. Also, we have an option for snapshots. If we have previous snapshots that we want to use for this EBS volume, we can select that here. Snapshots are basically a point in time backups of hard drives. So if we have those from previous EBS volumes that we want to re replicate here, we can do that here. And lastly, encrypt this volume. By default, EBS volumes are not encrypted, so we will need to encrypt the volume here if we are able to do that. So we'll leave the everything by default and click on create volume. So here we have it, we have our first volume created. Obviously the volume is no good unless it's attached to an EC2 instance. So, he, so here's where we can go ahead and attach our volumes to our EC2 instance, which we created in a previous lab. Now keep in mind there are some volume limits to how many can be attached to certain instances. For example, Linux supports up to 40 volumes, whereas, whereas Windows machines support less depending on what type of configuration you have. So make sure you find out how many volumes can be attached to a specific instance if you will be attaching multiple volumes to certain instances. So in the actions is where we can modify the volume if you want to create a snapshot, which again is a point in time backup of this specific volume, delete the volume, or what we want to do is attach the volume. And when we see when we click on the instance, since I only have one, only one is showing but if you have multiple instances, this is where you will need to either put in the name tag or the instance ID. And then click on Attach. Now I have two EBS volumes attached to my instance. One which was done by default when I created the instance. And one which I just created now. Now a couple of other things in the Elastic Block Storage. In the snapshots, this is where we can create snapshots of our... Of our EC2 instances EBS volumes and more importantly is the lifecycle manager this is where we can automate the creation of snapshots of our EBS volumes so it's basically backing up our EBS volumes on an incremental basis so please keep in mind that all snapshots are incremental so it's recommended that you take an initial snapshot of your EBS volumes and either save that as an AMI or put that away in an S3 bucket and then keep your regular snapshots saved in another bucket because each snapshot is an incremental version of the previous one. So if you only have one place where all of your snapshots are being stored, then you will have the latest version of that EBS volume. You will not have the original EBS volume. 
So that's it. It's a pretty simple process to create an EBS volume and have that attached to our EC2 instances.